Disclaimer, this video will contain spoilers for the Attack on Titan story. It is intended for those who have finished the story or for those who are just looking for an insight and do not care about spoilers. With that being said, enjoy. Attack on Titan is a Japanese manga series written and illustrated by Hajime Isayama that was first published in 2008 and then it was later developed into an anime in 2013. It is set in a world where humanity is forced to live in cities surrounded by three enormous walls to protect them from gigantic man-eating humanoids, referred to as Titans. The story follows Eren Yeager, who vows to exterminate the Titans after they bring about the destruction of his hometown and the death of his mother. This video is the first part of a series where I decide to take a deep dive into the mindset of Eren Yeager to try to give understanding of his characters and the decision he makes in the later seasons. Eren is 9 years old when the story begins and is friends with Armin and Mikasa who are the same age. Eren never had any dreams or aspirations until Armin finds a book that reveals things about the outside world such as deserts, jungles and snowy lands, all which Eren, Armin or anyone else behind the walls has never seen before. So Eren, who has now been shown a world vastly bigger than he could ever imagine, now has a main goal and it is to pursue that freedom that is in the book which becomes abundantly clear in a flashback episode early on in the series where it shows how Eren and Mikasa met. Mikasa lived in seclusion with her mother and father and one day her parents get murdered by human traffickers who are trying to capture both Mikasa and her mother because they are, are of Asian descent. Eren's father, who is a doctor, was supposed to meet with Mikasa's family that day and Eren just so happened to come with his father by chance on the same day. When they discover the bodies of the parents, Eren then stupidly runs off from his father to later find Mikasa being held hostage. At nine years old, Eren tricks the men and stabs them to death. Eren then get, starts to get strangled by another trafficker. Eren tells the timid Mikasa, fight. If you do not fight, you cannot win. Please fight. This awakens something within Mikasa and Mikasa stabs the other man. After saving them both, Eren then wraps a scarf around Mikasa and says that he will always protect her becoming one of the most iconic scenes in the whole show. The reason I bring up this scene is because it shows that Eren will do anything to attain his freedom, not just for him, but for the others he cares about. So to attain this freedom, he wants to go venture beyond the walls and become a scout so he can see these sights. When the day came when the Colossal Titan and Armor Titan broke down the wall and let the other Titans in, Eren witnesses the death of his mother and his father goes missing, which continues to fuel this rage inside Eren. Eren then swears on this day that he will kill every last titan. Eren has a vision later in the night that he and his dad had a talk. His dad tells him to keep safe the key to the basement of the Jaeger family home, which Eren has always wondered about and his dad was going to show him on the day that the walls broke down. When Eren wakes up from this dream, the key is around his neck. He's not sure why, but he knows he has to protect it and he must get to the basement. We skip forward five years and Eren is now a practicing soldier, ready to achieve his goal of both freedom and learning the answers about his world. Five years on and the Colossal Titan reappears and opens a hole into the second inner wall, causing the same chaos as five years ago. Eren this time thinks he is ready for him, however when fighting the Titans, Eren gets eaten but later reappears as a Titan himself, which completely shakes up the whole story and really gets things into gear. After the initial fear and confusion and the death of Eren's friends uh, and his squad, Eren becomes the sole hope of everyone in the walls and has the power to transform into a titan at will. He vows to use this power to fight back against the titans and the scouts enlist Eren with the catch being that if Eren cannot control his power, humanity's strongest soldier, Captain Levi, will kill Eren. Eren accepts this and they venture on beyond the wall as scouts. Eren questions why he has the power of the titans and wants to uncover the mystery but continues to push on to help humanity. His answers have to wait. The captain of the scouts, Erwin, comes to the conclusion that the armoured titan and the colossal titan must be the same type of titan as Eren, one who can transform at will. Erwin then decides that the best course of action is to have Eren be used as bait to lure them in on the next expedition outside the walls. But when they go outside the walls, they are met with a female titan. 
This Titan is similar to Eren and the other notable Titans we have seen. This Titan also kills everyone in Eren's squad bar Captain Levi and she tries to capture Eren by nearly killing every scout along the way. This leads to a fight between Eren and the female Titan in the forest after they deduct that the female Titan is none other than a fellow soldier in Annie Lean Hut. Eren and Annie have another fight, this time inside the walls. Eren eventually wins, but Annie crystallises herself in a cocoon state. When Annie tried escaping the walls, she rips off pieces of the concrete, which reveals that there are colossal titans inside the wall. This is a cliffhanger that is left on season 1. Season 2 begins with a breach in the walls that is caused by the Beast Titan. A titan completely covered in fur, and slightly taller than Eren's Titan. This Titan kills one sing single scout by controlling the Titans. He does this by speaking to them. So far, he is the only Titan in the series we can see that can speak. He kills this scout so he can take the ODM gear and study it, foreshadowing that he might be from a place outside the walls. It is later revealed that the Colossal and Armored Titan were Reiner and Berto, who were also soldiers in Eren's group and were friends with Annie. With all this backstabbing and emotional conflict going through Eren's head. He loses his battle to the Armor Titan after nearly defeating them. They try to take Eren back to their homeland after the scouts chase down Eren. With the commander losing an arm in the process, they find themselves at death's door, but Eren comes in contact with the Titan who killed his mother. When he touched the Titan, every single other Titan obeyed him and ripped the Titan who killed Eren's mother to shreds. The scouts use this to escape and go home, this leaves Eren confused and wondering why he can control the Titans and why he could only do it at that exact moment. With Eren now having the power to seemingly control the Titans, it has now become abundantly clear why Reiner, Berto and Annie are so desperate to capture Eren and their rivalry is far from over. Season 3 starts with Eren getting captured by the true royal family and the father of, of Historia, Rod Reese, who keeps him in a crystal cape underground. Rod reveals that Eren's father stole the power of the Titan from the royal family and that to gain the Titan power you have to eat a Titan shifter in human form. Eren then unlocks the memory after Rod Reese and Historia touch him. They realise that he must have ate someone to gain the power. The memory reveals that Eren ate his father and gained the power of the Titans. Rod Reese then turns himself into a Titan using Titan Serum after Historia refuses to do his bidding, bidding being eat Eren, take the power back. Eren unlocks a Titan ability by drinking a bottle from Rod's bag that allows him to harm the skin just like Annie's crystallization ability. They manage to escape from the crystal cave. After the scouts defeat Rod Reese, the scouts discover Eren's newfound ability. The scouts realise that they can close the hole in the walls and try and reclaim the lost land and uncover what was hiding in the basement. They set course for Shiganshina. When they arrive, they are expecting an ambush. However, they seal the first hole in the wall with no issue with Eren's new hardening ability until Armin susses out that Reiner is hiding in the wall. Levi tries to kill Reiner, but Reiner escapes. Reiner transforms on one side of the wall and on the other side the Beast Titan reveals themselves and transforms alongside an army of Titans. The Beast Titan then throws Bertolt over to the other side of the wall in a barrel and he transforms into the Colossal Titan which wipes out everyone as the Colossal Titan is revealed to have a power that is like a nuclear blast. It kills everyone on that side of the wall bar the people who Eren shielded. After an all-out war that sees the commander leading the scouts on a suicide charge, the scouts manage to defeat the titans forcing them to retreat. The scouts on the other side of the wall manage to capture the colossal titan and are then faced with the toughest decision they'll ever have to make. On one side of the wall, only two people survive and the new scout Flock and the commander Erwin. And on the other side, Armin is burned to a crisp but still alive. Earlier in the show, it is revealed that Kenny was Levi's uncle but he also stole from Rod's bag, he stole a Titan Serum injection that can save someone from the brink of death. On the rooftop, the conflict only escalates. Erwin who is bleeding out to his death and Armin who is burnt to a crisp, both on the brink of death. Levi, the man in charge of the serum, 
has to make the toughest decision yet. Erin pleads to Levi, the man trusted with the serum, to revive his friend Armin. He begs for him to allow Armin to live so he can see his dream of going to the ocean alongside Erin. Erin says that Armin will be the one to save humanity, not the commander. Erin brings up good points like Armin being the one to suggest a plan with the boulder to check the walls. Erin begs and pleads and cries. However, Mikasa accepts that they need the commander. Erin just can't accept it and has to get took away. After the intense altercation, Levi makes his decision. With the battle seemingly over and the scouts in possession of the colossal titan power, they head towards the basement. In the basement, the truth is uncovered. Eren's father left behind three books and a photograph of a portrait of his life outside the walls, pictured with a son and wife. Inside these three books contain the knowledge of the outside world. With what they were about to find out, Eren and the rest of civilizations behind the walls world would be forever changed. Eren and the rest of the world live on a small island called Paradise Island and are a part of a bloodline called Eldians. Many years ago, a nation called Marley went to war with the Eldians and captured, managed to capture the power of seven titans after the Eldians oppressed the world with the titan powers for years due to this. The world put all of their hatred on Eldians. People of Eldian descent are the only people who can turn into titans, which naturally had everyone fearing them. But when Marley won the war, Eldians became less feared and just more hated. This led to Eldians who live outside the walls to be forced to wear armbands and fight on the front lines, very similar to the treatment of Jewish people in World War II. If the Eldians did not abide to these rules, the punishment would be being sent to paradise. Eldians would be lined up up top of a wall next to the coast of Paradise Island and get turned into titans, sent to roam outside the walls where our civilization we know live. So, where does Eren's father come into all this? Eren's father, just like Eren, also pursued freedom, but because the Eldians are oppressed, he, like Eren, had to live his life restricted behind a wall. One day, Grisha, Eren's father, decides to take his younger sister to see the airship. When they arrive, they are met with Marleyan soldiers who give Grisha two beatings, one for him and one for his sister, as Grisha took hers. The soldier lets Grisha stay to see the airship, while the other soldier takes his sister, Faye, home. Grisha goes home to his grieving parents who tell him that his sister drowned in the river. The same soldiers tell the parents that it was Grisha's fault for the death of his sister. Grisha doesn't believe that his sister drowned. He is then fueled with rage and doesn't understand why or how his sister had to die. The same rage that was inside Eren. Years pass and Grisha becomes a doctor and one day he has a patient that tells him the truth about his sister. His sister didn't drown. The soldier in fact fed his sister to his dogs just because she was an Eldian. The patient revealed himself to be an Eldian restorationist and asked Grisha to join them. Grisha accepts and becomes a leader in just a few short months. Their goal is to restore Elder to its former glory and retake the power of the Founding Titan, one of the two powers that are still in possession of Eldia. The Eldian King fled to Paradise Island and built the walls of millions of colossal titans and threatened the world that if anyone interfered with his peace, he would unleash the colossal titans and flatten the world. The Restorationists have been working with a Marleyan spy known as the Owl and he supplies them with a woman of royal blood who marries Grisha and has a child with him. The child is revealed to be Zeke, the half-brother of Eren and the current Beast Titan. Grisha manipulates his son into being a warrior and forces him to become a Titan Shifter so they can retake the Founding Titan. Instead, his son tells the government about their plans and the Restorationists are sent to paradise. On top of the wall, it is revealed that the Owl was a soldier that beat Grisha all those years ago and let him see the airstrip. He pushes the other soldier off the wall the one that killed Grisha's sister. Grisha's friends and wife are turned into titans in front of him 
and his wife turns out to be the titan that ate Eren's mother. Eren wakes up and realises this wasn't a bad dream, but that he was connected to his father's memories. He then realised that the titan who ate his mother was his father's ex-wife. Eren then remembers another conversation between the owl and Grisha, which reveals that the owl has the power to turn into a titan and is supportive of Grisha's plans. He persuades Grisha to continue the mission and retake the founded titan, but then Grisha, who is frustrated because he's just seen his wife die, is emotionally upset, asks, why don't you just do it? Grisha is totally against the man as he just let his wife die. The owl reveals that all titan shifters only have 13 years to live and that he is at the end of his tenure. The owl reveals his name to be Eren Kruger and tells Grisha that he couldn't let the enemy have a person of royal blood in their custody. He tells Grisha this is the story he started and this is the only way to achieve the freedom of Eldians. Kruger then tells Grisha to move forward to save Armin and Mikasa. Grisha looks up, confused, who are Armin and Mikasa? The owl Eren Kruger says he has no idea whose memories those are. Grisha, for some reason, realises what he must do. Eren and his cell, along with Armin and Mikasa, then work out that Eren only has 8 years to live and Armin has 13 years to live. Eren and the scouts are then rewarded with medals of bravery at the funeral for all the fallen scouts and when Eren comes into contact with the Queen Historia, he unlocks more memories and is left with a traumatised look on his face. Only Eren knows what he's seen and he doesn't share any of this information. One year passes and Eren and the scouts venture on towards the ocean. In the last year they have thinned out the titan problem outside the walls. Eren has a new perspective. When the scouts come across a titan stuck in the ground, Eren doesn't feel hatred towards the titan. He then just understands that it was an innocent person who was turned into a titan for no other reason than their race. Eren and Armin finally reach the ocean and Armin is overcome with joy as he tries to share his excitement with Eren. They have achieved their lifelong dream, they have reached the ocean, but Eren is not in the least bit happy. Eren has a dull look in his face. Eren realises the dark truth, that they will never truly be free unless they kill everyone outside the walls. This becomes Eren's new goal. <sighs> Sembu Korosaba. Oretachi. Shiuni Narinoka. <laughs>